Hi, hello. Today we are going to be going over 10 different things in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet that the game didn't tell you. So hopefully you learned something and without further ado, let's dive into things. Okay, so this tip starts at the TM machine. I think most people have been here before. Let's say you are prepping for competitive or raid battle or you just want to make your favorite Pokemon have the moves you want it to to make you can actually see what is craftable but you can see here we don't have enough materials to make protect uh, we need scatter bug powder so we can actually press the plus button on this and it will watch it it will put a little uh little bell on top we can do this with a couple let's say we want acid spray what a great move and um get one more here that we don't have x scissor all right we've marked three items you can mark more if you want we hit the right d-pad we can see all of the materials we are tracking. Uh, we need some scatterbug powders, we need some uh, toxal sparks, and we need some fomantis leaves. And so instead of going back and forth and remembering what you need, because you need six protects for your obvious competitive team coming up, you know, you don't have to run back to the Pokemon Center to do that. And the game, I don't think at any point tells you you can do this. If it did, I missed it, but um, I think this is really helpful. Okay, the next tip is another thing that the game doesn't tell you. Uh, this was actually introduced in Pokemon Sword and Shield where it didn't tell you in that game either. But if you have a level 100 Pokemon, uh, whether that's from an old game or that was wonder traded to you or that you just weren't paying attention, you gave it too many candies, you can actually evolve it at level 100. So if you were wonder traded a bunch of shiny Magikarp back in Sword and Shield and you're like, man, I wish this was a Gyarados. Uh, you can actually do it so in this case we're just going to give uh this little spider a rare candy you can see that it's level 100 and it's going to evolve now this should work with pretty much any pokemon uh as long as you meet the evolution requirements so for friendship pokemon you would still need like the max friendship then give it the rare candy this really isn't a tip but let's uh let's just get rid of that guy real quick for this tip, we are back in Medali, uh, AKA Larry's town. And uh, if we go by the stage and we go behind the stage, we actually see like a construction worker back here. And he talks about uh, coins. And the cool thing about this guy is if you have 999 Gimme Ghoul coins, he will start holding on to all the extra coins and he will give them to you after you involve your Gimme Ghoul into Golden Go. So if so if you have 999 Gimme Ghoul coins, you can continue opening chests and you can continue picking up coins, but you can't hold anymore because you need to use these coins to evolve a Gimme Ghoul into Golden Go. You can evolve your Gimme Ghoul into Golden Go and then come to this guy and he will give you all the coins you have picked up since maxing out. It makes getting a second Golden Go a little bit easier if you continued collecting coins and you're like, why am I collecting these? Do I have to sell these? Uh, this guy right here in uh, Medali, he'll hold on to those extra coins. Hopefully that helps. Now this tip is a little specific, but if you go to Mesagosa West Pokemon Center, you can walk over to this little flower garden. And this lady tells you if your Pokemon are really big or really small, and if they hit max bigness or max smallness, jumbo or tiny, uh, she'll give you a mark. So the, the th that's not the tip. Well, that could be a tip for some people who didn't know that. The actual tip is if you did the seven star Typhlosion raid, um, it actually, guarantees the mini mark on it. So that means it's the smallest Typhlosion possible. You already get the mightiest mark, uh, which is all the seven star raids that you do for like Charizard, Inteleon, Samurott, Chestnut. But specifically the Typhlosion, every Typhlosion will have the, the, the teeny mark. But in order to get it, you have to talk to her. She'll say that your Typhlosion is the smallest she's ever seen and then she'll give you the mark. You can do this with all your Pokemon. You can have her check all your Pokemon to see if they're huge or small. But if you did catch the seven star Typhlosion, you want to talk to her and she'll give that Typhlosion the tiny mark. Okay, the game kind of tells you this, but uh, you have to kind of be paying attention. So if you look in the, the lower corner, it says R and there's an arrow. I guess maybe if, if maybe you don't know what that means, uh, but you can actually lock the map. Uh, I locked it where north is always uh, above and I feel like that's like what 99% of people want. But if you push in that R3 button, which is your joystick, you can ro rotate the map. This is this is the default of the game, by the way. Uh, and I don't find this particularly helpful. I don't know who does. <laughs> but if you just hit back in that R3 button, 
Uh, it locks it, so north is always north. I, I feel like most people who have trouble with this are people who are not used to open world games. Hopefully that's helpful. Another thing Pokemon games don't really tell you is the loot drop table. Um, six star raids have a Herba Mystica drop rate of about 13% and five star raids have an Herba Mystica drop rate of about 11%. For five star Pokemon, uh, there should be a little graphic that will pop up. Uh, you want to look for Gengar, Blissey, Glalie, Drifloom, Amoongus, Electros, Dondozo, Palafin, or Satitan in any five star raids. Doesn't matter what Terra type they are, they have a higher chance of dropping Herba Mystica. Now, promoted events don't count. So if you remember like the Blissey event where you could get a bunch of Terra shards from Blissey, that's considered a promoted event. So they don't qualify for Herba Mystica drops, but any standard Blissey or Amoongus or Satitan, Palafin, all that stuff, you wanna always do those because it has better Herba Mystica chance. And for six star raids, you're going to want to look for Vaporeon, Blissey, Amoongus, Rigoraf, Dondozo, and Satitan. Those all have also increased chance of Herba Mystica. If it's not any of those Pokemon, it's just for six star. Again, it's a base 13% chance, about 13. And then for five stars, it's about 11% chance. If you're playing with other people, a friend finds a six star Vaporeon. Pretty helpful to have everyone jump in for uh, equal chance of getting boosted Herba Mystica. Okay, this next tip is, again, something the game doesn't really tell you, uh, especially if you avoided the school throughout your journey. But uh, you can actually unlock extra fly points uh, for the shrines. So we have the uh, Grass Wither Shrine over here, Ice Wren Shrine here, Ground Blight Shrine to the north, Fire Scout Shrine over here. And you can fly to all of them. The main reason you would want to unlock them is purely for the fly points. And the way you can do that is by going into the school and doing the language classes. Uh, you have to pass the final exam from the language teacher. He will unlock that for you. You can see I didn't do the other classes, but the, the languages unlocks four extra fly points for you. So I, I think that's worth it. It probably takes about 10 minutes. Uh, I think adding four extra fly points to your map is, is worth it. Uh, if you've made it this far in the video and any of these tips, or at least one of these tips have been helpful, uh, I would uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, all that would be appreciated. 69% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed, so that would mean the world to me. But yeah, I hope a couple of these tips were something you didn't know. Another thing you might not know in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, because the game does not tell you this, is uh, there's really only a handful, there are very limited ways to get EV reducing berries. Um, so this would, if you're building raid Pokemon or you're doing competitive, one of the ways to get EV reducing berries is to buy them from the auction. I do a lot of competitive and I do a lot of raid builds. Berries go up for sale in the auction. I always buy them because these will be able to reduce your EVs so you can then change your EV spreads on your Pokemon. But if you don't have the money or you haven't been keeping up with this and a new raid is around the corner and you want to build a Pokemon and you realize that it has story EVs, <laughs> so they're all over the place. The other way you can get EVs is by going to Alfornada. I'm probably saying that wrong. But once you're back in this town, you can retake the gym challenge, not the battle part, but the mini game part right here. So if you do this mini game again, this exercise mini game, uh, your reward for this will be a handful of the EV reducing berries. But this is the this mini game and the auction are the two main ways of getting EV reducing berries. Now in Pokemon Sword and Shield, there was the cleanse lady that came with the DLC and she would clear all your EVs for, I think it was a handful of armor right or, or whatever the currency is for the Isle of Armor. That, that doesn't exist in this game. Uh, hopefully that comes with the DLC, but as of right now, your two options are to do this mini game to get the EV reducing berries or to keep purchasing them from the auction. But hopefully when DLC comes out, we won't have to worry about any of those two options and they'll just be a cleanse lady that we can just pay to clear out all the EVs and start fresh. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about in the video is the raid shield. I've talked about this in other videos, but if you're just stumbling upon this video and you're looking for things that the game doesn't tell you, this is a really important thing that the game doesn't tell you. Um, so again, if you've seen this in my other videos, uh, this, this is a repeat, but for anyone new, I, I want to talk about how the raid shield works because again, the game doesn't explain this. So 
when a Pokemon puts up their raid shield in a Terra raid battle, uh, you do significantly less damage. I think that is obvious if you've ever done a like a five or six star or seven star Terra raid. But if you're not terrestrialized and you are fighting the raid boss, your move is only doing 20% of the potential damage it could do. So really easy. Imagine your move does 100 damage. You're only doing 20 out of the 100 damage when the raid shield is up. Uh, 100 damage move would be like Earthquake. Now, if you terrestrialize and you select a move that doesn't match your Terra type, so let's say you terrestrialize Electric, but you decide to use Earthquake, uh, you're going to do about 35% of the damage of pretty much 35 out of 100. Finally, if you terrestrialize and your move matches the move you're using, so example, Earthquake is a ground type move. So if you terrestrialized ground, you would do 75 of the 100 damage to the raid shield. Um, and this just shows the importance of terrestrialization in some of the harder raids. Again, the game doesn't ever tell you this information or tell you why you should be terrestrializing. Uh, but if you're struggling to do damage um, at this point in the game, or you have, you know, people are always picking up the game new or fresh, or maybe you just got the game last week. Uh, that's how the raid shield mechanic works. And again, the game doesn't tell you that. Uh, we found that from Anubis on Twitter. They data mined uh, the game and gave us the values of how the raid shield stuff works. So ho hopefully that is uh, helpful to anyone who is still doing raids in Scarlet and Violet. The next thing you might not have known in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet is on your birthday, if you go to the Pokemon Center, it, congrats it says happy birthday, which that in itself is not new to Pokemon game. Uh, but getting happy birthday from the Pokemon Center is very nice. The The actual tip here, the thing you might not know, is they introduced a destiny mark in Scarlet and Violet. And that is a mark that will appear on Pokemon you catch during your birthday. So your base odds of encountering the destiny mark on your birthday is about a 1 in 25 chance. But of course, you can make a sandwich to increase that. So if you decide to make a title level 1, your chances are 1 in 13. If you make a title level two, your chances are one in nine. And if you make a title level three, your chances are about one in seven. So that's a really cool mark. You can only get on your birthday. So I would maybe recommend either hunting your favorite Pokemon, maybe your favorite shiny Pokemon to not only get a shiny on your birthday, but a chance to get the destiny mark on your birthday. That's a new thing they added in Scarlet and Violet that made nowhere in the game tells you. Uh, thanks for making it to the end. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, if you did, feel free to leave a comment of something that blew your mind. If uh, if you made it to the end and you knew all of these, I would be really impressed that you knew every single one. But also, uh, if you did, I'm sorry. Uh, but thank you for making it to the end. Uh, and until next time, uh, I will see you guys later. Bye.